Hello everyone, I am Bianca and we're here in Denmark at the Summer Dance Camp. Next to me I have Peter and Christina Stockerbro. They are multiple times Danish champions, British Open champions, European champions and world champions. Any big competition you can think about, they have won it. Um, together with Frank Hogg, uh, they are org organizing the Summer Dance Camp in Denmark. And um, we're so happy to be here. Uh, it's such a good energy and a good vibe and people are working so hard. But at the same time, they're relaxed and they can enjoy themselves. And congratulations for creating such a beautiful event. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to um, start the interview with a bit of um, background. I would like to ask you how you started dancing and how you started dancing together. How was the oh first tryout? <laughs> here comes the fairy tale. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a bit of a fairy tale for you our want to start? audience. I started uh, of uh, three years old. My I could not stand still, so I, apparently my parents thought that I should be starting something, and that was dancing, and. My parents has nothing to do with dancing. They were just, you know, looking at me and seeing that I was not standing still <laughs> when I listened to music. And then I went, went to dance a dance school in Odense, where I'm born. And I was there for many years. And then I met Peter in an age of actually 10 years old. We were in the same uh, class. That's right. And then things started. We, we of course, had different partners. And then one day we we thought actually we should be dancing together, but I don't know if you want to start with your story no, as well. It's a, it's there are very two similar sides part. of it. Yeah, of course. We we were here, and then suddenly we met in yeah, in a funny, very early age actually. Yeah, the funny thing is, it's actually a similar path. You know, we started both at the age of three. I started at the age of three. My mom thought that I should learn to behave well with the Lady. girls, with the ladies. Yeah, <laughs> so I. Uh, I was sent to the dance school and uh, I don't really know if I liked it or not, but I just did it. It was something I was supposed to do, but I figured out that I was talented at moving and dancing. And how, how did you figure that out? Well, it's, uh, it comes, of course, gradually. Don't, no, as a kid, you don't realize, but uh, the moment I started at the age of 10 to, mm. to do a competition, a small competition, then yeah. I won and then people start to respond. You know, you dance and you realize that ah, people acknowledge what you do. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I played football, I did karate, and I did also uh, like a, a theater school. Mm -hmm. But somehow this dancing kind of drew me. You know, mm. I, was, I was okay at the other things, but some, I, I went back to the dancing all the time. Mm. And, and wha why do you think dancing uh, allu allured you the most? Mm. Well, that's uh, difficult. <laughs> yeah. I think all humans have yeah. a passion for dance, actually, honestly. I know people say that, well, I can't dance and I don't want to dance, but that's more about social limitations yeah. or psychological uh, limitations because we all, that pleasure of dancing, what the endorphins and the joy that gives us, yeah. I think it's universal. Mm -hmm. I think if you look at really young people like kids, if they listen to music, they are going to move or sing or do something and they don't have any you know, bond that, oh, I cannot do that. comes a little later when they acknowledge more about other things, then they probably get a little shy. But actually a lot of really young kids, they just go for it, which is nice to see. True. I, I remember some stories when I was a little child that my grandma used to dance tango with me oh. because that was the only way I would eat. So okay. <laughs> I can. It, it's appealing for children to yes. dance, yeah. and it feels yes. natural for so them. You got a you got a tango in the price. <laughs> <laughs> you eat, and then you can get your tango. Exactly. Yeah. That's amazing. That's yeah. cool. And. Um, I would like to, I, I'm very curious, and all the great couples I'm asking this question, I always get uh, quite emotional answers. Um, actually, I have two questions like that. But the first one would, would be, what is the most cherished memory uh, from your career? <laughs> oh. Yeah, that is emotional because that, that is uh, deep stuff going on uh, exactly. as a dancer because we, we travel on a road for years, you know. Yeah. It, it's not just... A, a trade or it's a lifestyle it's a complete identity so we we immense ourselves completely in this uh, uh, education of ourselves and to explore and find and 
I think the the most memorable moment for me was when I realized something or the learning took place or um, how can I say an understanding was realized so you could work hard on something and then suddenly it just clicked and you went and that could be with a specific teacher mm-hmm. who had that uh, magical Moment. word the right word yeah at the and, right time at the right actually. time you were ready as a student it could be a, a, a revelation in practice that yeah. something suddenly happens and you start to understand a little bit deeper what this was about mm. and i could kind of look on my my journey as a dancer that i had those moments of wow you know now i understand i would uh, i would say actually when i touch people when i i you know when we've been dancing and people come up to you afterwards actually oh, yeah, with tears in, your, p- in their oh, yeah. eyes i go okay <laughs> it's really uh, it, that that uh, yeah. feeling of touching people in a, in, a in deep, an uh, emotional uh, sense i must say that was the most uh, um, you know, hard. Powerful. Pa- yeah. yeah, powerful. Actually, powerful. I remember a show. Intense. Intense. Mm. Yeah. This was really, um, you were surprised. And in the end, you were going, oh, sh- that's yeah. really, that's I really had, uh, something. One interesting lesson I never forget. You know, you had those lessons where it just, just burned into your mind. We had a lesson with Espen Salberg in, the, in Italy. And uh, that lesson was... Uh, I don't know if it was 45 minutes or one and a half hour, <laughs> but it was me doing the Volta <laughs> and Christina Nespen observing. <laughs> and, you know, it got so deep and so detailed and so uh, we were so immense in that. Uh, and I just completely forgot about time. But and of course, at one point I was like, that's that's a lot, you know, and it's it's a Volta. But it was so deep that I never forget it. You know, it's yeah. it's I am very good at Volta now. <laughs> Uh, because I took the time and my teacher took the time yeah. to make me fully understand and was not just uh, skipping along because maybe felt boredom or this is too much or not. keeps mm-hmm. striving for that uh, what we were looking for mm-hmm. let's call it like that mm-hmm. and um, that was se- se- severe <laughs> yeah yeah the, there are a lot of great dancers I remember even in some lectures in Black Bull that um, I can't remember the names right now, but I know I've heard this story from different great dancers that they had one teacher, one lesson at one point in a lesson doing the same thing for hours. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes sense because yeah, yeah. it stays with you. It kind of burns itself into yeah. your into your memory long term. Um, and related to what Christina said about this touching people, I think so. so one part is this personal journey for yourself Mm -hmm. to understand better Mm -hmm. which is quite uh, how can i say fulfilling Mm -hmm. and the other one is this sharing with other humans why do we dance in the end in in competitions and shows and stuff it is because we want to share our our artistry with people and if they acknowledge you it is the biggest gift you can have yeah yeah and there was a guy I remember in Switzerland many years ago. <laughs> I also it was just that guy, ridiculous. Uh, we went into a show, and um, there was I, I remember there was a husband and wife sitting on the front row, and and uh, po- apparently a girl, mm-hmm. their daughter. Mm-hmm. And uh, I could see he was uh, watching a rumba, and and he got quite emotional. Uh, you, you could feel somehow, you know, mm-hmm. we bowed and you you uh, connected with that man and. And we met him afterwards, and he said uh, he just had to tell us that he had never watched dancing before. This was wow. his first time. Hmm. And uh, even now, he made yeah. me emotional. <laughs> <laughs> you are actually quite emotional, generally. <laughs> <laughs> you make me emotional. As well. <laughs> and actually, he was extremely emotional when he came, and he was very. Um, how can I say? You know. No, no words. He was just standing, looking at us and being very um, honest, being emotional to us as well. And of course, that gave us um, a big impression, really. Burns in that experience. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Technical difficulty. Yeah. My no, God. It's deep. Yeah, but now we went deep. Yeah. Okay, I'm not the only, I'm the only one not crying. <laughs> I was um, 
I was laughing uh, in Blackpool with uh, <laughs> some of uh, the people I interviewed in Blackpool and um, there were um, um, actually Ferdi and uh, Yulia Mush mm. Mushkina said, I feel like in a therapy session. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's oh, true. It's, uh, and, and, uh, it touches something deep, you know, and, uh, yeah. and it's universal, you know, everybody understands it. He never saw it before. And uh, I understood that dancing is a universal language, you know, it, yeah. it's emotions that is difficult to explain with words. Yeah. Uh, and, sure. and talking about expressing, and you mentioned earlier artistry, how do a couple create their dance personality? This is my favorite question from mm. the entire mm -hmm. list, and I ask everyone that question. How a um, person A, and person B come together and with their personality manage to create a unique style of dancing. Mm. Do you think the dancing world influences their personality or they bring their, their personality on the dance floor? Mm. Well, I think to a certain degree both, you yeah. know, and, and I think we, we cannot ignore the fact that we are being influenced. Of I course. mean, uh, we had a session with trainers here where we discussed exactly that social uh, pattern mm. that we behave in a certain way, yeah. also institutionalized, and we dance in a certain way. And, uh, and I think the biggest dance stars tried, uh, are able to keep their uniqueness regardless of, of the institution's uh, forms and what you are supposed to do, but they keep that strong character. And that makes them special. Yeah, but yeah. I, I would say a lot of kids, you know, they have idols and they look at these idols and of course they will copy or do something. And by time they learn and they get more experience with their own thing and what to say with what they have. So I think in the, in the age, with age, you, you develop more and more your own thing yeah. and you believe in it because you probably have been, you know, around trying mm. things and then you're okay with your own thing towards the end because you trust it hopefully yeah. Yes. yeah yeah with the greatest answer that's what i think so in the end maybe we do the same thing but you still see the difference from the the finals mm. they have their own style mm. yeah yeah you and a lot about teachers you know you have the right teachers yes. it's amazing the, the, the best teachers bring the best out of their students and, and allow the student to evolve through, uh, through learning all the rules and then understanding how to, to deeply uh, uh, work with it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and not to just be schooled and correct because then we become a copy of something. Or yeah. So to, to let the student first teach them all the stuff yeah. on the younger, in, yes. in a very thorough way, yeah. and then take the next step to uh, to make them lift up and, and become uh, self uh, um, how can I say that it's, 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 uh, I don't remember the word in English self uh, Autonomo autonomous uh, autonomous being able to uh, being being dependent yes sort of let leave, let them go on on their journey exactly. and support them on the way yeah. Yeah. and it becomes their project yes. somehow. Mm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah I agree Definitely, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And um, because we discussed about teachers, and now let's, um, let's uh, guide our attention a bit to what makes a great dancer, a great student, and great, a great couple. What, are, what would you say are the three main characteristics of a great couple? Uh. It can be all technical stuff mm. or uh, emotional um, soft skills, let's say. Mm. Um, of course, you need a little bit of all ingredients to be a full dancer. Yeah. I don't feel that if they are the best in the technical qualities, they will win. They have to have emotional uh, and personality and musicality in a, in a certain degree to be a full dancer. So all the skills like mechanical skills, uh, musicality skills, emotionally skills, they have to have touched all of these ingredients to a certain degree to feel that specific dance mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. dancer or become yeah. that full dancer. Mm -hmm. I would say uh, um, hmm. 
because we, we see the examples of the talent that didn't yeah. make it and we yeah. see the one that was less talented and making it yeah. and making it, it sounds a bit uh, cliche but becoming a uh, world-class performer let's call it like that yeah. because mm. results is a little bit um, out of our hands yeah, that's that's not a measurement you know a measurement is your uh, how you would be looked upon as a dancer you could have won and you could have been third but you all everybody knows who was the most yeah. famous and the most popular right um and i think it is uh, hmm. well, it's difficult it's difficult i be i believe there's something about this uh, stubborn uh, what we call that it's not stubborn but <laughs> i don't know what you want to say but i also the personality itself like you say self critical yeah, you, you, you questioning know. keep pushing uh, keep driving, driving yourself yeah. and not just being content yes. i don't know the word in english but uh, i think it ma- it yeah. makes sense what i'm trying yeah. to say it's um it's a continuously quest for that extra yeah. uh, ego to for yourself to, not yeah. for somebody else you know no, it's not no, ex- no. external it's it's internally pushing yourself in order to reach some kind of a of a goal for yourself mm. uh, and that because you can have all different qualities some are technical some are this some are that yeah, yeah. but in the end is the one that just keeps going and and everything and melting together and then you yeah. di- it disappear again right like you have a yeah. lot of skills and in the end in you the don't end really see the skills it down. just becomes yeah it and um, because uh, you said something and ma- made me think about the differences between what you have in mind when you practice and what you have in mind when you enter the competition dance floor. What do you need to have in mind when you enter a competition floor? Normally nothing, mm. <laughs> I would say. Mm. Uh, it's a quite, um, I think it's quite well known challenge for all dancers. We are yeah. learning so much, we're getting so much information and yeah. we're filling our brain with intellectual yeah. stuff and tasks and measurements and checking if everything is okay. And in the end, we need to let that disappear into embodiment and it is in the body and you can trust that it's there. You don't need to double check, mm. which means then you have to put your mind to something else. Mm. That is a greatly misunderstood for many dancers. They're trying to achieve whatever they the last practice, lesson yeah. or whatever the last task was and then they yeah. think, I'm myself included, uh, trying to do it on that dance floor yeah you, yeah. Needed to you wanted complete. that goal of the last period of development yeah. in the dance floor but yeah. that's not the goal mm. the goal is to come out and, and and let that be what it was and then uh, show share, what you share are able to yeah show what you are able to do right now mm. it was uh, funny when we were in the end of our career we found a way to solve that because you know we were very connected and partnering and technical yeah. and it was very difficult because i was programmed to check <laughs> if it was okay. So in the end, we didn't touch before we, we, we went, now we walk on the floor. Mm. So I had to dance myself and get so much into myself that I forgot completely about her, trusting that she would do her job. Yeah. And then we just went, yes. hello, boom. And that made, it was really, really good. Because mm. very often what happens is we just tr- check if it's there, you know? Mm. Let's just feed each other, is it there today? Well, the the thing is, then we will start for searching for something that was yeah. uh, will be there or not be there. It, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> and I so. think it's very important that every couple has their own way to get in the right state to dance a competition. Mm. And I think that lies also in the in the practice. Some practices you go very detailed and you do things slow and you repeat and yeah. you do maximum thorough exactly, yeah. and then you leave it then you have a physical practice. That means leave whatever you know mm. and test it in a physical mm. practice like a competition mm. where you're going to go f- 100% yeah. for what you need in a competition. And then when you have done that, you can go back, okay, how much of what we are practicing in this time is there? Maybe 20% or whatever. But it's fine. I accept that's what it is. And then I will go tomorrow again, do this uh, yeah. re- repetition of uh, coordination or whatever it is we are mm. working on. 
So you're separating a little bit, so your mind is also prepared for doing a competition mm. because you're also practicing that. Do you, do you ever miss it? Do you, do you miss going to competitions? That's difficult to say. <laughs> I think we accept the reality of life, yeah. that mm. you, there is a time for everything. Mm. And uh, of course we can stay and try to keep that yeah. beautiful moment we had there as young people uh, dancing. Uh, mm. But reality is something else. And I yeah. think if we are not re uh, real about uh, that we grow older and we have a different purpose in life yeah. when we grow older, becoming teachers, becoming parents, parents and... Uh, yeah. And, and not stay in that dream, which yeah, is it's a bit of a dream world. No? I think uh, we got pulled a little bit uh, fast out of the dance competition because I got pregnant. Yeah. And I think when I got pregnant, we got scared. We're like, what now? What, what is... Yeah, what, what's life going to... Uh, we are not prepared at all What for are we going to do now? So in our mindset, we, we were like, we will definitely dance again. Yeah. But, you know, in the, those nine months... We were preparing a little bit, you know, maybe it's not going to work. Mm. <laughs> like, yeah. So, uh, traveling around with a kid 200 so days. So, honestly, yeah. I don't miss it. No. Because we enjoy it every day and we dance every day, and yeah. there is something about uh, that. The and only thing I miss a bit is dancing together. Practicing, yeah, practicing, yeah, practicing together practicing. and exploring, and we don't have enough time for that. No. Goes but we still say bit. every day yeah. we <laughs> should do nice more, we should do, practice. Yeah. It's nice when but, it's... Uh, but performing, no, not really. No. Sometimes we do a little bit if people want us to do it, but in intimate yeah. places where I don't yeah. feel like sh I sh need to cover a whole hall. Small, intimate, dark places, nice. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Romantic lights. <laughs> yeah, then we do a little bit. And, and talking about competing now, what, are, what would you say... Uh, it's good about dancing nowadays and what was good dancing in early 2000s? Uh, very, uh, very clearly, level of understanding mechanics is constantly developing. Now I'm speaking generally, Gen not, yeah. not for the individual, but if I look generally, our knowledge gets better and we, we are topping, on, you know, we, we stand on the shoulders of giants and we talk on, uh, we, I mean, society of dance. Yeah. And uh, so the, the knowledge is growing, the understanding, mechanical, mm -hmm. the ability, people's ability to push ourselves, the understanding of technico technolo technological uh, developments, understanding physical training, yeah. skillful. The yeah. skills are just unbelievable, yeah. um, improving. Yeah, I think, uh, actually, if I, yeah? I can say, what was better at our time was that we didn't need to choose which federation we had to dance for. No, that was definitely we a We were difference. amateur, yeah. we were professional, and it was, they were cooperating. The and dance world was definitely somehow a, yeah. in a balance where... So f as a dancer, I think we, we were very privileged yeah. to actually not have that fight. And, and you didn't have to have the choice. You didn't have yeah. to I, ask yourself what you want to do. Do I need to do, do I do the right thing? Yeah. I think that's We all did that's the same sad. thing. Yes. Yeah. I think it's sad for, for all the young kids to, today that they have to choose. And another that's thing, sad. if you look at society generally, uh, even though we say the skills and the capacity and people's uh, trainedness, they train a lot, uh, somehow the, the sense of uh, depth we had and the generation before us is a little bit uh, dissolving into... Yeah. Uh, quick fixes and uh, quick results, quick uh, success and acknowledgement. But I think it's a, it's a society thing with social media. It's a it's te technology yeah. moved us there. Yeah. And, I, uh, and we're all sitting here going a little bit sad that it's happening, but we have to, we have to deal with it. Yeah. This is reality. Mm. And how to, to still ha kind of uh, use it maybe in a positive way I don't think, uh, actually, I don't think we have found out how to deal with social media and technology. It's gone so fast that yeah. nobody knows how to respond. You don't know how to use that tool. It's just now overwhelming everybody. Mm. And we all, uh, and it's a bit chaotic. Mm. And I'm sure with time we start to learn how to, to put it 
as a reasonable part of our lives mm. and not let it rule us. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I agree. <laughs> so I would like to um, uh, move a little bit the discussion because we are in the end in Denmark at the, the summer dance camp. And I would like to ask you if you could explain a bit more to our audience a bit more about the summer dance camp, how it started. I know mm-hmm. it started in 2011. Yeah. 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 Eight years ago. Yeah. Eight it's years. quite a long time. Yeah. yeah. And um, if you could uh, say more about your event. Mm. It came from an idea of uh, sharing, actually. We, we did once a, a workshop in Denmark with a psychologist and all the dancers came together and we realized that that energy of trainers, dancers uh, coming together had a, a beautiful uh, possibility of, of growth. Yeah. And then uh, we started with the fruit trainers and then suddenly the whole thing exploded I don't know maybe because it was a, in the right time and people needed that and they mm. felt that mm. we also had a lot of uh, we have a lot of dancers and trainers who's been here from the very first time mm. which gives us some kind of a, an idea that the what we deliver okay. in this camp is of value exactly. it's all about value <coughs> mm. and uh, and the value is that we try to uh, to share discuss inform we have many trainers here who come with their couples and 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 want to educate and we want to educate ourselves so it's not about us teaching mm-hmm. other people it's us teaching ourselves and we teach each other mm-hmm. um, i think the most powerful thing is that we have this level differentiated teaching as well for dancers that we have for for the juveniles and juniors mm. in danish yeah okay that's the <laughs> the, the kids who danced a few years yeah. We have the uh, level of national level, <coughs> juniors and youth, and we have the international level of some of the best dancers in the world. Standard Latin, we have seniors. So we actually manage to, to give everybody exactly what they need. Yeah. And we put trainers, uh, and they know exactly what they go in for. So it's not just a lecture that just, you could say, you, you, in, you have a child and a senior dancer. They don't need the same. <laughs> they don't understand the same. They're no. not being not supposed to be taught the same no. so that we level different shade and age different mm. shade i think is is one of the biggest assets of what we do mm. and i would say if i may uh, the other big asset and what made us come here and uh, be glad that we're part of this event is that you're uh, friendly with both federations and that's a wonderful mm. thing well that's Denmark. that's denmark <laughs> I mean, yes. in denmark we have a, a yeah. special situation where actually uh, many people are members of both and it's yeah. not you're not being told uh, that you cannot be it's it's kind of innate because we are not that many people and <laughs> and uh, uh, as we say we, we learn from uh, we learn to find a solution mm-hmm. and the solution is definitely that in Denmark we need to work together. all work together because our society is not big enough for separation Yeah. And then I could say that the dance world could probably uh, listen to that a bit yeah. and think that uh, and I think in would the be end great. But anyway, that's a dream. Uh, we just have to acknowledge that the dance world is separated, but in Denmark we need to, to kind of together. Uh, stick together. Mm. And, and um, yes, dancers choose which federation they dance in, but they just choose. Yeah. We all they have dance, to. they have yeah. to dance, unfortunately yeah. choose that. But In Denmark, we have competitions. Everybody can dance this one. Everybody can dance that one, mm. and um, and I think a camp. I mean, a camp doesn't differentiate anything. No, I think education is not limited to federations. Mm. Education is human right, and uh, everybody who who wants to educate should go for places which can offer that best possible, regardless of federation. Praise uh, to that. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Yeah. So I think. Um, accepting that uh, reality is a different one in the world and every country has their own situation but um, i think we do quite well in denmark i don't think it's a bad situation i agree <laughs> um, i have two more questions yeah. for you uh, one is about little william uh, <laughs> who is not so little anymore <laughs> Uh, I think everyone knows the video of him on YouTube. Yeah. He's famous on YouTube with, I think, over 40 million views. Yeah, that's right. 
uh, he did a little improvisation of uh, a little show on his own on a dance floor. Uh, did you expect him to do that? What was what? What did you feel in that moment when you saw your child owning the dance floor? <laughs> I think you didn't even see. There was it no. Show. I didn't see it first you, of all. You, you went just in. I the went end. to the bar. Yeah. And it I was actually the opening of our studio back home in Aarhus. Yeah. And we had a yeah show where everybody could come and have watch a the dancers and present. The, uh, and then in the breaks we had this. Um, Social dancing. Social dancing. You can go and walk on the floor, but not what he went. <laughs> Only William, and he, and went he went every time. There was this social dancing, and everybody. The more he danced, the more people stayed out. <laughs> so they were just filming him. So we had a lot of vi videos. Different actually, videos from, from yeah. that uh, day. And then the uh, one of our students' mothers was asked to video the event, and she just came a week later and said, "Oh, you have to see this. This yes. is unbelievable video." This was what. What happened? Because yeah, I just heard room. the roar, you know, yeah, the, the people, people were screaming, like, clapping, whoa. and I was like, "What is happening? What's going on in social dancing that can be so amazing?" <laughs> what's so crazy? About yeah. uh, so I went in, and I just see my son bow, bow, bow. and then, and, and I was like, "What happened?" Um, and then, of course, uh, it went. <laughs> At that time, we didn't know much about YouTube, yeah. and. Uh, one of our friends said, well, you should put it on YouTube, then we could share it with the dance friends. Mm, yeah. And then I went home and we said, oh, let's <laughs> do it then. I remember that Friday night, we were yeah. discussing how to do it, and yeah. we cut the video and uh, put it on, and they say, it's going to be... And then I opened an account, I didn't know that oh, we yeah. had to do that, put it on. That was the first video I put on YouTube. <laughs> 40 million views. That's pretty crazy. That's a good start. That's, that's a good start. Yeah, and I mean, we went... For holiday, uh, overwhelming response. Of course, it went like uh, viral. Viral, and viral. that is a it's true essence of that because we didn't do anything than just put it <laughs> there, and then Suddenly. somebody not in the dance world picked it up. Exactly, exactly. And then it just accelerated yeah. uh, at that time, yeah. and. Um, yeah, the rest is history. Even I didn't know uh, it was your child. Well, I, I've seen the video before, and when I've d done my research for the interview, I searched Peter Stockerbro and Christina, and I was crawling down and say, William Stockerbro. I was like, what's this? <laughs> it's like, oh my God, their child. This is their yeah. child. This is amazing. He's more famous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's the exactly. most famous yeah. in dancing, huh? Yeah. Um, and uh, I would like to conclude my interview um, with um, a, the, a couple's most favorite question. <laughs> what do you love the most about your dancing partner? Ooh, that's... <laughs> uh, well, I'm curious to hear what yeah. you yeah. <laughs> You start, lady. Mm. Don't need to think so much. Like a dance partner or like a partner? Whichever you would like to to say, both if you want. Uh, he's very funny, makes everything like uh, funny and and in a nice way make make me laugh. Mm -hmm. He's good at making me laugh and and entertain, which is a nice quality to have. Don't cry again. No, no, I'm uh, I'm quite cool. <laughs> Trying to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, I think Christina keeps me uh, on the ground, you know, because <laughs> I'm quite a uh, um, dynamic person and quite uh, active. And yeah. Christina is more like the Mother Earth, keeps <laughs> things. Um, and she's very, very gentle and very um, genuine person. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, and uh, she takes care of my family <laughs> and i think it's beautiful we have a good team yeah and i uh, when I i'm flying yeah. around the world i feel uh, trust that she 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 takes care of uh, the school the kids she's an amazing woman a lot of stuff she's doing i i agree even uh, this is the first time i meet you and in the first day when we arrived here i said to my colleague raluca it's like Oh my God, I love Christina. She's so motherly. I mean, <laughs> you can you you um, breathe out um, gentleness, and I confirm yeah. that. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You. <laughs> thank you so much for the interview, and Pleasure. thank you so much for having us here. And uh, cannot wait to see you again. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.